when we create a container database as per the new multi tenant architecture you create a container database which is made up of a single root database commonly referred to as root but it is cdb dollar root followed by a seed database and one or more pluggable databases that you can create after the container database is created thus a container database is a collection of multiple databases called as the root seed and pluggable databases from an oracle terminology perspective the entire cdb is called as the system container whereas the root seed pdbs are all individual containers now let's look at each of them the root database has a collection of schemas and schema objects it contains the metadata and code that is supplied with the oracle database and every other pluggable database that you create typically created for each and every application you have the user created objects metadata and code in the specific pdbs themselves and in general you create a pluggable database for every independent application the whole idea is you will consolidate independent databases which you used as non cdb databases into a single cdb and thus you have multiple databases running within the same cdb considering a traditional non cdb architecture perspective the seed pdb is basically a template which can be used to create new pdbs in a quick cloning mode that is the whole idea and the contents of the seed are entirely cloned and a new pdb is created the seed as such is only in read only mode you don't make any changes to it then in 12c release 2 they brought about a new feature called as the application container wherein you create an application root and use multiple application pdbs the whole idea is to centralize and have control on any patching that you want to do in an application you have a master application pdb and you can create multiple application pdbs which will get their metadata from the application root the whole idea of doing this is to simplify applications that you want to patch and manage in a easy manner or if you consider an organization wants to offer a saas application they can have a master application root and create individual application pdbs which would have data for each individual customer and applying a patch in the root can apply the same structural changes to all the pdbs in one go so we are not going to get into details about how application pdbs are used here but that's the overall idea about this now looking at the system table space every root comes with its own system table space and this table space is very similar to the standard system table space you get in a non cdb database where the oracle supplied metadata oracle supplied code the dictionary everything is sitting inside this system table space all the pluggable databases refer to the system table space for this code base that is given by oracle and every pluggable database also has its own system table space individually for each one of them and the metadata and the code for user created objects or application created objects 
are kept in the corresponding PDB system table space. As I told you earlier, the typical use case is to create a separate pluggable database for each particular application or each particular requirement and each pluggable database becomes self-contained wherein whatever objects you create inside that, they are stored inside the system table space of that particular PDB in terms of the metadata and the definition of them as such. The root and all the pluggable database have a sysox table space. The entire CDB related performance data is kept in the root sysox, whereas individual PDB specific performance data sits inside the respective sysox table space. You create additional table spaces in each PDB where you can keep your application data. Generally, you don't create any other object inside the root in the form of tables and indexes that is pristine and managed by Oracle code alone. You create your application related schema in specific pluggable databases by keeping table spaces specific to that pluggable database. So each PDB is self-contained by itself and all the PDBs refer to the root for the Oracle supplied code as such, the dictionary definitions, everything. There is no local copy in the system table spaces that are part of the PDBs individually. As a result, if you compare, if I were to consider each of them to be a non-CDB on a different, different uh, server or even in the same server, the system table space is duplicated with respect to the Oracle supplied code. Now, given that I have three PDBs in place, the system table space has no duplication because there is one system table space in root, which has all that Oracle gives. So I save the space and I also have a single patch that I apply when Oracle supplies a patch. It applies in the root and the entire CDB, including the PDBs are patched as per that. The entire container database has a single instance. Thus, we are sharing the memory and process resources. The SGA is shared by all the PDBs. The background processes are shared. It's a single instance considering a single instance environment. On the other hand, if you have an RAC setup, the CDB is the storage. Whereas the instance that is started is started on multiple servers. Multiple instances are available for the entire CDB. Using services, you may make a particular PDB related service be available in a particular instance or multiple instances. That is the standard feature of services in an Oracle database. Nothing specific about container database and multi-tenant architecture. Thus, with all this, we get the ability to consolidate in a native manner within CDB itself, multiple pluggable databases intended to be for each specific application and put them together by sharing the resources on a single physical server. This is the overall architecture about the container database multi-tenant architecture. We will see a little more details in the next couple of videos that come after this.